Russ here with DinoJet Research. We are updating what we have uh, called our Tuning Link program that uh, many of the older users will be familiar with from the Power Commander days. And it is greatly improved. It will now be working with the uh, PVOG, PV3, PV4 platforms. This will make your tuning more accurate, faster, simpler, and allow you to make more money in your shops. Let's get started. All right, now we're gonna open up the C3 feature of WIMPEP 8. We're gonna accept our Pro Tuner License Agreement. We're checking the firmware now to make sure everything is up to date. Okay, we're gonna click on Tuning Link. It's gonna read the ECU. Make sure you're in the run position. So at this point, we're reading the calibration that's in the ECM that we're going to make our tuning link runs on. Tuning link will automatically set up the calibration that's in your ECU for tuning link data acquisition. We're going to give it permission to proceed. And we're now reading the the ECM of your motorcycle. This takes a couple of minutes. This is watching paint dry. Yeah. Dynajet recommends that anytime you're doing downloads on the dyno that you do have a battery charger hooked up to ensure we have plenty of voltage. If the battery voltage drops below certain levels during the download, it can soft break your ECM. So make sure you have a full charge on your battery, guys. Since we're using PVOG, Tuning Link software is now converting this to a PVT. And it comes up and says, Tuning Link performs corrections using selected settings. So we don't see any wideband modules here. So we have to hit our refresh button. And now it gives us two choices in this case because I happen to have two hooked up. The dual auto tune or the default is the dyno or RT wideband module. In this case, I have a dual auto tune hooked up. Although I, I recommend the RT wideband dyno. So we're gonna go ahead and accept that. The tune has been prepared for logging. That means it's been set up. We have set the uh, Lambda request or AFR request to around 13 to one across the board. We're gonna pick a, a place to store this on the power vision and send it. Then it will fast flash into the ECM and we'll be ready to start our tuning process. Okay, we're preparing and writing the ECU now. Now, as we start running this bike, we're gonna be able to see that the, the benefits are gonna be accuracy and speed. You're gonna be able to do this much faster in your shops, making you more efficient, putting more money in your pocket, getting the best possible tune out to your customers. All right. Now we've got it prepared and we are going to uh, cycle the ignition switch. And you want to give it at least 10 seconds because we want to make sure everything resets. 10 seconds is official. I would recommend that you give it 15 just for a little safety margin there. We don't want to do any soft breaking of your ECMs. Come back on with it, tell it okay. Tune has been prepared and now we're in tuning link. Click one of the two cylinders that you're going to be going through. Set it into warm up mode. Now, we have tuning link set up so that you will not collect data below 180 degrees Fahrenheit, which is about 82 C. The reason for this is during the warm-up process, what's called warm-up AFR, or warm-up lambda, will be in play. And if we let you start recording at 140 F, for example, you're gonna get erroneous readings because it's going to be a different request than it's adjusting to. We do not want to record anything before 180, and this program won't let you do it unless you go into settings. In settings, you can start modifying things. We have a good set of recommendations here that have been tested thoroughly. If you change them, that's on you. But we have the O2 set up because they do run between 10 and 18. We have a minimum map that means minimum manifold absolute pressure at about 20 kPa. 
If you get a lot below that, you might go to 18, but when you get below that, your combustion is unstable, and again, you will populate your calibration with erroneous data. Minimum temp around 180. We don't want you going above 280 on the dyno. We know they get hotter on the road, but on the dyno, we want you to control this so you don't be blowing pipes. We have our RPM set up, our coast downs. All this is pretty self-explanatory. Our max adjustment in any one tuning link session is gonna be limited to 15%. You can set it higher if it's way out, but the problem is you will get overshoot. 15%, you will stay pretty accurate. When you get above that, then you're still gonna to have to make more runs anyway. So I would rather you did iterative runs with no more than 15% adjustment. Again, if you wanna to go to 25, you can on you. Now we'll start the motorcycle, let it warm up, and we'll collect some data for you. good cell coverage on this. I used all the different configurations we have. Warm up, steady state, free tune, load path. Examples are hard to hit areas. You might want to use free tune or load path. Primarily you're probably going to use steady state or roll on. As you can see that covered most of the cells in this map. Now that we're done with data collection, we're going to calculate a correction. Tuning Link software is automatically going to do this for you. And it will show you every correction that was made in all the cells we hit. Tell it OK. We're going to calculate the rear cylinder. All the changes that were made to the VE table in the rear cylinder. Tell it OK. You can see we got really good coverage. Now we have our finished tune from that session. If we want to continue tuning, we can leave it in uh, tuning link setup mode and then apply changes and continue gathering data and making more runs. This tune is fairly close, so we're going to apply changes and exit. This will turn it back into the original type of calibration we started with, road tune if you will. So I'm going to apply changes and exit. Make sure I've got my switch on. It prompts you to tell you that the tune has been restored from being prepared for tuning link and data logging. So now we're loading and we're writing the file to the PVOG and then it will fast flash into the ECM and we'll be done. Okay, now we've loaded it. We're returning to normal operation. We can turn our bike off now. We can look and see, see these cells that are highlighted? That's what was changed. Now with tuning link or any auto tune product, you need to look this calibration over when you get done and maybe do some blending. If you see some big disparities, we didn't get a cell, we dropped some data. That happens on anyone's product, including ours. So there has to be some good human interaction with this product. So again, look at the table, look at your data, let your data be your guide. That's an 89 in my last known good data point. So I'm probably gonna blend that up a little bit. You will be able to see clearly that it did restore from uh, the tuning link setup because these, these cells are your AFR requests or Lambda if you have it set up that way. And they would be set to 13 to one. These are set for what we want going down the road. So that's it. We have tuned the bike using tuning link with, uh, that's about it. I don't know, we'll have to carry, carry on later.